Hey folks, in today's video, we're going to be talking all about NX Console and the NX Graph. Let's check it out. So let's start talking about NX Console and what it is. NX Console is an optional plugin that you can use with your IDE. We support VS Code and JetBrains products. I'm gonna be using VS Code in this video because I'm a VS Code guy. But to install NX Console, all you need to do is go to the Extensions tab here, look for NX Console, you can see closing in on 1.5 million total downloads. And as you can see, I've already got it installed and I use it all the time. NX Console is great at giving you a heads up view of what's going on with your NX workspace. We can see in the pane that's open here, we have a list of all of the projects inside of this repo. And if we expand one of these, we can see all of the tasks that we can run for that specific target. So if I ever wanted to deploy my AOA app right here, all I have to do is click this play button and that's it. But today we're going to talk about how the NX console empowers you with the NX graph. So to take a look at the graph, I'm going to hit command shift P on my Mac and I'm going to start typing in graph. And we can see that the first option that comes up is to show the full project graph with NX. And this option is available to us because I have the NX console installed. So let's click on that. And what we see here is a visualization of all of the projects inside of my workspace and how they all interact with each other. Now, I actually didn't configure any of this graph myself. What NX is doing is actually analyzing my source code and looking at all of the import statements or require statements throughout my source code to determine how all these edges in this graph work out. And we can see that for this workspace, the graph is actually quite large to the point where it's kind of hard to focus in on any one thing, which diminishes the usefulness of the graph a little bit. But what I can do is if I am focused in on one of my projects here, so for example, this UI auth library, I can click it and here I can select to focus this specific project. And this way I have a much more manageable view of what's going on with this specific project, things that depend on it and things it depends on. Now the NX graph is actually a lot more than just a visualization. We actually use the data that sources this graph as a way of informing our affected command and informing dependencies when we do things like determine a hash for a specific project. We also use it to inform our task running, but we'll take a closer look at this when we take a look at the task graph later on. What we're looking at right now is actually the project graph. And remember, we said the project graph is being informed by import statements inside of our actual source code. So let's take a closer look at this. I'm actually a little bit intrigued by one of the edges I see here in the graph, which is specifically that my UI map editor library, it has a dependency on this UI auth library that we're focusing. It didn't immediately occur to me that this library should have a dependency on the UI auth libraries. So if I wanted to figure out why there was a line pointing from this UI map editor library to the UI auth library, I can actually click on the edge here. And when we do that, we can see there's a list of files that show where this dependency exists. And we can see as I mouse over this file, I can actually click on it and I'm going to be taken right here to where the import statement exists. So here we can see, I actually have a couple of assets here from the UI auth library that are being imported into the map editor lib. And that's why this edge exists. Now this is going to break my code, but if I decided to comment out these lines, hit a save on that, then come back to our graph. We can see that that edge is now gone and there is no relationship between the UI auth library and the map editor library. And if we come back to this effects file, reinstate that import statement and hit a save, there we go. The UI map editor library is back and the edge is back and shows us where that import statement exists. So as we can see, this is really helpful in terms of helping us debug why certain edges exist inside of our graph, maybe ones we didn't expect. And if we also wanna take a look at some of the configurations for a specific specific project, we can also click here. And if we click on this edit button, we can see it's going to take us right to the project JSON for our UI auth library. So that's the project graph. Now the button here to go right to your project, as well as the links here for all of the files on an edge, these are new features as of NX 16.8. So in order to unlock these, you need to migrate to the latest version of NX and you need to have the latest version of NX console installed. Now, if you're using VS Code, you'll automatically update your NX console plugin as soon as we release a new one. For IntelliJ, I believe you'll have to manually update these plugins yourself. But the same features exist in the IntelliJ versions of NX console as well. But as promised, I also wanted to take a look at the task graph here. And to take a look at the task graph, I'm actually going to pull up a simpler project. Let me pull it up real quick. Cool, so this project is kind of like a meme project. We have two packages here, is even and is odd. And each one of these packages, if we look at it, just has a single function in it that's going to tell us if a number is odd or if a number is even. 
And as we can see, if we look at our project graph again, we can see that even though we're using PMPM workspaces, NX can still tell that is even depends on is odd here. And taking a look at the source code for is even, uh, that checks out. And now taking a look at the NX console plugin, we can actually see that is even and is odd both just have two targets here, one for building and one for testing. So if we look at one of these and we click on this target icon, we're actually going to bring up a task graph here. We can see that for the is odd project, we actually have the test dependent on the build for that is odd package. And taking a look at the test for is even, we can see that is even, it actually depends on is odd and is even. So the way we would expect to see things happen is first is odd would build and then is even would build because it depends on is odd. And then finally is even can run its tests. If we take a look at the source code for our tests, we can actually see why. It's because we're actually importing the is even function, not from its actual source file here inside of the index.ts file, but from dist. So in this test, we're actually pulling down the built article fact and testing that. And this is why our tests have the dependencies that they do. Now, if we want to try things out, we can actually click on one of these tasks here and we can hit the play button. That's going to open up this dedicated terminal that's going to run through all of the dependencies before then running our test. We can see when things are finished, we successfully ran the target test for is even and the two tasks it depends on. So we successfully ran our test, but before that we successfully ran the builds for is even and for is odd. Now we actually don't have to set things up this way. Looking at our spec files, right now we're importing from dist and we're relying on NX to make sure our build runs first before we actually run this test. That way we can make sure that we're always testing our built artifact. But if we just want to just test our source code directly, we can also just import is even from index. And now we can go to our nx.json file. And here we can say that our test does not depend on the build of itself. Remember, we're no longer importing from the disk file, we're just importing from the source code. So we don't need to run the build anymore. We still do need to run the build on any dependent targets because when we import from this module, we can see that it's actually coming from the disk directory of our other project we depend on. So we still need to build the projects we depend on. We just don't need to run the build of ourselves before we did run the test. So now that we've made these changes, we can pull up the NX graph again and we can see the graph has been updated to show us that our is even test just depends on the is odd build now. Similarly, if we go to is odd, now we'll need to update this import statement here to import from the index again. But if we come back to the NX console and focus this is odd test, we can see that our test actually has no dependencies. We can just run it right away because is odd doesn't depend on anything. Now, if I come back to the is even test, we can actually see when we click on this, we have this nice play button that when we click it, it's going to go and run that test. And we can see that it ran for itself and the one task it depends on. So that matches what the graph has. Now, if you want to have this play button, again, you've got to upgrade to NX 16.8 and have the latest version of NX console installed. But in general, this is a great tool for debugging and testing out task dependencies inside of your workspace. So that's it for this time. I hope this has been a helpful video in terms of figuring out how NX console and the NX graph can help benefit you as you're working inside of your projects. In general, we see NX's job as staying out of your way so you can focus on what you need to be focused on. Now, sometimes you still have to debug some things like why you have certain dependencies between some of your projects or why some tasks run in which order they do. So these are great tools for helping figure out exactly why that's happened. So let's know in the comments if this has been helpful to you. A lot of these features were actually recommended by the NX community in the past. So thank you for that. And be sure to keep the suggestions coming because we're listening. Thanks everyone. Keep working hard. We're working hard here right alongside y'all. Peace.